guys watch a lot of gun tube, one thing that you'll notice recently is everybody is talking about the Global Ordnance Strybog. It's a nine millimeter pistol that's being imported and it's not new, but there's an A1 version that's new as they sent me this gun free of charge. So I wanna find out what it's all about. It has glowing reviews all over the internet. Nobody's found anything wrong with it. All the you know, channels that I've watched although I've had people send me some pictures of broken magazines, but that's not necessarily indicative of a flawed design in the gun. The mags might have problems, but so did the Scorpion Evo when it first came out. They had mags breaking, and that's an extremely popular gun, so sometimes things like magazines need to evolve, although we are in the A1 version of the gun, and I hear there's an A2 already in the works. So the Strybog comes in a case like this, and it is very affordable at $6.99 on the Global Ordnance website, which is full retail, and that's without a brace. It'll come with three 30-round magazines, which is a nice touch. These are already loaded. I've not fired the gun yet. This one was sent to me with a SB Tactical folding brace, and then I put a Primary Arms Micro Dot, Red Dot, on top of the gun. It's unfired. We've done nothing with it except put a red dot sight on it. I still need to zero that, but this is the Strybog. Again, if you watch GunTube or Instagram, this is not a new gun, and I don't want to rehash things in any great detail that have already been talked about on other channels. It will come with its butt cap if you get it with the SB Tactical Brace. Now keep in mind, $699 does not include the brace. If you want it with the brace, you're going to pay a couple hundred bucks extra, so it starts to inch from $700 up closer towards to $1,000 as you see it here. But when you get it with the brace, you'll get your end cap for the pistol, a lock, a very abbreviated owner's manual, and a spare set of sights, which are plastic. I don't know why and the gun itself. All right, so what we've done is loaded up some magazines. We have the three 30-round magazines here, plus a few extra 30-rounders and a 20-rounder from our friends over at Gun Mag Warehouse. They sent the mags out for us so we can make this video so we don't have to stop every few minutes and reload the three magazines that come with the gun. So if you'd like to pick up some magazines, they have really great pricing, usually very fast shipping. And yeah, I shop at Gun Mag Warehouse all the time and they support us here at the Military Arms Channel. I also have loaded some Federal Syntec 130 grain PCC 9mm ammunition, pistol caliber carbine, which is kind of what this is, although this isn't a carbine, this is just a pistol with a brace. This is given to us by our friends over at Federal. We would like to thank them for supporting us here at the Military Arms Channel with the ammunition. If you'd like to buy some Federal ammunition, swing by and check out the guys at 2A Warehouse and they sell Federal and pretty much any other brand that you might want. Great group of guys, I know the owners, uh, good folks. So 2A Warehouse, if you're looking to pick up some ammunition. All right, so with all that said, let's go ahead and start shooting the gun. Talk briefly about some of the features, some of the similarities to another gun out there on the market I already like, and see what we think of this thing. Now this is gonna be a multi-part video because I do wanna address the issue of magazine durability. We'll take the APC9 mags out, the, the BNT mags, we'll take out the Scorpion mags, and we'll take out some of the Strybog mags, and we'll do one of our magazine tests, drop tests, and durability tests to see how well each of them hold up and if there's any failure points with those three different types of polymer magazines. In this video, we're just going to shoot this gun. Uh, we'll probably put about 500 rounds through it this afternoon, and then we'll follow up with a magazine test and some more shooting and let you guys know how this gun fares as time goes on. All right, so let's get set up and do a little bit of shooting over on our new pistol range because we found a place that's uh, a little bit out of the wind here on the new Mac range. And as you can see, all this grass sits down, that's because of our deer. So we've actually relocated our deer <laughs> so we could do a little bit of shooting on our new handgun range. All right, guys, let's start shooting, get this thing zeroed and see how this Strybog uh, SP9A1 impresses me. All right, let's load this guy up for the first time. Now, I will admit the controls on this gun are uh, different than what I'm used to. I'm used to what it very much looks like, which is a BNT APC9. Uh, the controls are very similar to the APC9, but they made 
one big change, and that was to the bolt hold and bolt release, which just is a sheet metal U-shaped tab that goes around the receiver, but this gun's fully ambidextrous, so you can put um, the charging handle on either side, and you can actually also access the bolt hold bolt release from both sides, as well as the magazine release, and there is a, a accessory that's available that you just pop this pin out, you can take this little sheet metal U-shape piece off, and they have extended tabs, which you might want if you like to lock the bolt open because it's kind of hard to hit this little sheet metal tab with your finger. I honestly don't like that. I think that's kind of weak sauce. Um, it's, it's functional, but not ideal for me. I think it could have been better done and perhaps that after or their, uh, their accessory would, would improve that functionality for me. All right, so we have a 30 round magazine loaded up with the Federal ammo. Mag locks in nice and easy. You can reach up with your thumb and drop that bolt, safety lever. Safety moves very freely, almost too freely for my tastes. And it's very small, but it's of equal size on both sides of the gun. But easy to get to, very AR-ish. Non-reciprocating charging handle on the A1, so I'm gonna hold my thumb here. It shouldn't come back and hit me. All right, so the ejection pattern's all over the place. But um, yeah, all you gotta do is come up a little bit, I think on my red dot sight, and it's pretty good. So we'll make those adjustments here in a minute. Let's go ahead and run out these three magazines. And we got a malfunction there. We've never had a malfunction with the PCC ammunition in any of the other guns that we use, but uh, let's go ahead and clear that out. And we're gonna have to lock the bolt open because we have a round in the chamber and it's trying to feed, so we'll drop this out. Drop the bolt. Try it again. We shoot this stuff all the time. I've never had a malfunction with the PCC ammo. And another one. Now this isn't surprising to me because I noticed right away the thing's throwing stuff all over the place. There are spent cases all over the place. All right, let's lock that open. Drop that round out. And I tried to hit the bolt release and it would not feed from the magazine. Let's pull the bolt to the rear, try it again, and it just screwed up again. So there's something else stuck in there, I think. You know what's funny is, look how it's, the rounds are in the magazine. Jason, um, there goes one. <laughs> Jason's over there chuckling because I said, this thing's gonna run flawlessly, guys, because everybody on the internet loves this thing. And he's like, that's what you're going with, huh? And I'll be damned, Jason. <laughs> I. What is wrong? Something is keeping that bolt from going home. Wow. <laughs> That's a malfunction. Can you see inside there, man? I'll try to get a picture of it if Jason can't get it and turn to the sun here. But there is a case just absolutely mushed inside of there. All right. We're gonna have to change ammunition, and I shouldn't have to, guys. This PCC ammo is designed for guns just like this. I run it my BNT, my uh, Scorpions, everything. I run it at my handguns. I've never had that issue before. So we brought out some 115 grain. Hopefully that'll run it better. I just can't believe with all the glowing reviews out there that this one would be having problems. So we're just gonna change up the ammunition on it here. Let's see if I can clear that malfunction. Holy cow. Wow, this, is, this reminds me of the AKV-9. So that spent case just fell back into the trigger mechanism. Now the gun's really seized up. 
That pin's going to be tough to get out. Disassembly is going to be very difficult at this point. I got to try to shake that. There it goes. With that bolt stuck partly to the rear, it would have been very hard to get the gun apart, I would imagine, with spring pressure holding those pins in place. But there you go. Huh. That's a souvenir. And then the magazine just dropping rounds like that. Don't like that at all. All right. Wow, well, we got one more mag. We might as well empty out the mags that we've loaded with this stuff. Now, Grand Thumb in his video, he ran the thing right out of the box and just continued to run it for thousands of rounds with no maintenance, and that impressed him, that reliability. I'm doing the same thing. Took it right out of the box. It's uh, mostly dry, but there's a little bit of oil on it. You can see it seeping out. They don't ship it dry, so there is oil inside the gun. But, uh, yeah. It's just throwing spent cases everywhere. <sighs> All right. All right. We're just going to have to stop using this ammo and try try the 115 grain stuff because this is just a waste of time so it seems to me that the gun at this point may just be ammo specific it just doesn't like pistol caliber carbine ammunition ammunition designed for something like this so let's revert to 115 grain ball and unfortunately we got a whole bunch of magazines from gun mag warehouse loaded with this stuff that's our luck all right we're gonna have to unload some magazines this is my APC-9K. It also has a side folding brace on it, and this is basically what the U.S. Army adopted for their submachine gun. Now, TFB, uh, the firearms blog, did an article, and it actually turns out the Strybog went up against the BNT in the military trials, and of course the BNT won. Um, we'll do a direct comparison, but there's so many th things about the BNT that are superior in terms of ergonomics to the Strybog. But again, this gun costs twice as much or more uh, than the Strybog. So, I wanted to show you really quick though, we have two magazines loaded with the exact same 130 grain PCC ammo, and we're gonna use my little BNT gun here. It has a non-reciprocating charging handle. And I haven't zeroed this one either. Not surprising, the BNT runs the ammo just fine. Does look like the brass is going all over the place, but the BNT has no problems with the PCC ammunition. Again, you've seen us use that ammo over and over again here on the channel, so it's really disheartening that the Strybog is struggling with it. Anyway, we'll talk more about this gun as compared to the Strybog later. We've got all these magazines loaded, and the easiest way to unload them is to shoot them out. I'm going to grab some LPS lubricant. We keep this in the Polaris. We'll give this thing a little bit of lube. See if that helps the situation at all. Maybe it will. I don't like that it requires lubricant, but that's just a failure to feed. And it just sprayed out three rounds. These magazines are just spraying rounds out. They're not cracked or broken, but you can see that round is about ready to go. It's just, it's just barely hanging there. Look at that, the round after it, just falling out of the, the magazine. That's, that's horrible. And, oh, the magazine's bound up now. <laughs> what a 
choke. Wow. All right. Is there a case in there? We're going to have to find out. There must be another case in here. That's only, it just dropped two rounds. That's what it is. It ate another case. There's a case in the, in the trigger mechanism. That's horrible. The magazines are spraying rounds out and cases, empty cases, just like the AKV9, the early one, the PSA AK, rounds can get back into the trigger mechanism. That's a serious no-go. Wow. And I will say that the, the recoil impulse on this is definitely more pronounced than the APC. I think I just lost another round. It's gonna be fun mowing over here in the spring. But the APC-9 has a hydraulic recoil buffer in there that this thing lacks. Ah, locked open. Woo, made a whole 30 round magazine without a malfunction. That's amazing. Eh, I spoke too soon. So the bolt release up. Ah! There is a spent case in the trigger mechanism I'll have to spin around here, put the weapon on safe, see if the sunlight will show it. But there's a spent case back inside there. It's holding up the works again. Thought we had a full 30 with no malfunction. We're going to finish out the remnants of the 130 grain Federal. Now, this is a 130 grain bullet that's advertised to be going at 1130 feet per second. We're going to switch over to 115 grain ball with a copper jacket and that's advertised at 1180. So they're of comparable speed. Now the Syntec jacket is just a polymer jacket. It's meant for competitive use. It's meant for shooting steel plates so you get less spalling and, and metal coming back at the shooter like copper jackets and things like that. It's also intended to reduce friction in the bore and reduce metal fouling in the barrel. That's the reason the Syntec is being used. So again, we've not had problems with the Syntec in other handguns. So we're gonna finish out the remnants in the BNT and then we're going to switch over to the 115 grain standard ball and see how well the dry bog does with that. Hopefully, it's just my bad luck and I stumbled into ammo it didn't like. I will say the ejection's erratic with the ammo still, even with this one. And locked open. So the BNT has no issues with the ammunition, and that's the end of the Syntec for now. So throw the BNT over there on the ground. And now we have some 115 grain ball. So here are the two different types of ammunition that we have out here. The Syntec, 130 grain and then this is the 115 grain ball doing 1180, presumably out of a handgun. All right, so we have all the magazines loaded up with this. Let's hope this resolves reliability issues with the Strybog. It's not gonna correct the issues that I see with the magazine where it just sprays rounds every once in a while. And I don't think it's gonna correct the issue that if you do have a malfunction, there's the possibility a case can get back into the trigger mechanism with the gun. All right, come on little guy. Wow, that stuff's a little bit warmer, it seems.
definitely different and improved. There we go. Now, this is more in tune with what other people were reporting on the internet. It seems though that the gun is ammo specific. Not a good thing, but as long as you feed the ammo that it likes, it seems to be doing just fine. Speaking of spalling, I just had a piece of copper jacket hit me in the face. That's why you run Sentec. Very good. This makes me much happier. Still not impressed with the magazines, but the gun's working. The recoil impulse, others have described as very muted. I would disagree. I think that it's uh, really not much different than a Scorpion and Maybe better, I know everybody's comparing it to a 9mm AR, which really do have a lot of recoil, believe it or not. Um, I'll have to bring out my Colt 9mm when we come out and do our follow-up video, but I really don't see it being that big of a difference in terms of recoil impulse. This thing's a little bit jumpy compared to what other people have said, at least in my opinion. The uh, trigger, though, is very, very good. I do like the trigger. Getting used to that bolt release is a little bit awkward. Don't like it. Yep, the trigger is nice, but I wouldn't say that it's uh, much different than the BNT that we're out here shooting today, and we'll compare it to other guns when we get them out here. It's kind of hard to compare them to guns that you don't have with you presently. So we'll do that in another video. And there we go, guys. All right, much, much better performance and more in line with what I've been seeing on the internet. Muzzle nuts walking off there a little bit, but it does have a half by 28 thread on it. All right, so put a little bit of oil on it. I don't know that that was the issue. For whatever reason, I think it just didn't like that 130 grain PCC ammunition. All right, let's load up some more magazines and see how she continues to run. Malfunction with 115 grain federal ammunition. Standard stuff, guys. You can see the ammo we were using? That's what we call B-roll. That was supposed to be so I could slide in some information about the gun, and we got a malfunction. That spent case is somewhere inside there. No, maybe it fell out. We'll find out here in a minute. Guys, this is standard stuff. If it doesn't run with this, or if it has the occasional problems with this, that's, that's bad. Now it's lubricated. Um, we just checked the gun, took it apart. Everything's fine on the inside. Let's see if it'll finish this mag out. Should. Again, federal 115 grain ball, guys. This is quality ammo. Never had a problem with it before. One round left. And you can see 
the ejection pattern. It was just, some of them were just barely limping out the ejection port. I thought it was ammo specific. I may have just gotten a lemon. All right, guys. <laughs> you know what? We're done with the gun for today. It's having all sorts of problems. That's 115 grain ball it just screwed up with. Guys, what can I say? Uh, based upon my experience with this gun, it's bad. Now, other folks have had really good experience with the gun. And I'm not discrediting anything that they've done. They've probably got a gun that works fine. As fate would have it, I got one that just doesn't. And Jason's chuckling because he said, I have about a 90% chance when I buy a new gun of getting a lemon. Doesn't matter who makes it. That's depressing, guys, but we will follow up. We're gonna shoot it some more, see if it continues to have problems. If it does, we're gonna send it to Global Ordinance. And uh, if they don't hate this video and don't wanna send the gun back, which would be bad on them, uh, we'll follow up and let you know what went wrong with the gun and how they fixed it, uh, assuming that we have problems going forward. We're gonna shoot it a whole lot more. If you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best way to do that is to become a Patreon supporter because we don't take money from companies like Global Ordnance or firearms manufacturers. We're supported by you, our viewers. So there's a link down below. Consider following that link and supporting our efforts here at the Military Arms Channel. And please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thanks for 11 years of support. We'll talk to you guys soon. So what's happening is, all right, look, I don't enjoy making videos like this. It sucks. I hate it when I get guns that don't work, but I was clearing a malfunction. I had one round left and I had that happen to me. I just wanted to see if it would happen again. Magazines firmly inserted in the gun. Oh, that time it tried to pick it up, but it misfed. This goes back to, I believe, these guns need a revised magazine. People have sent me pictures of them broken, but I have not broken one, so I can't say that that's a problem. But what I can say is definitively from out here, no matter what magazine we use, we'll get feeding issues, we'll get issues where the magazines spray rounds out of the magazine, and where the magazine binds up and will not push rounds up. And that's just unacceptable, and these are all factory magazines. At least bump fire works. <laughs>